Hello everybody, uh, this is photography lesson number two and in the last one we talked about how to hold your camera, um, how to compose a shot, how to clean up your area and just to isolate your subject, how to get close enough to your subject so that the shot turns out good and then we talked about zoom, how to zoom in and out and then how to enhance your photo or crop it. So you all should have sent me two images one the original image and then the second one cropped and enhanced and today we're going to talk some more about composing a shot and some of the ideas behind uh, fine photography not just taking pictures of people so I'm gonna um, switch over to the computer now and we'll go through that uh, enjoy all right so this is a review of what we talked about yesterday on the left is uh, a photo from the cemetery near Middlesex of a tree. And that's one time zoom without um, it changing the exposure. On the right is two times zoom, so zoomed in on the tree. And if you remember from yesterday's video or the video one, um, I tapped on the image and a little sun came up to the right. And what I did is I pulled the sun up and lightened the image so when I took it, it would be an improved uh, image. So that just is a little review of what we did yesterday. It works a little different on Androids or different devices, but most of our uh, most of our devices now have that, where you tap on the screen on the subject, and you can uh, set the focus on that subject, and you can also change the exposure. Now, if you hold it for a minute, if you tap and hold it, it will stay that way until you tap it again but if you just tap it once it will change so today we're going to talk a little bit more about composition uh, most of the time when you take a picture of a person people tend to do straight on shot looking right at eye level and that's a fine shot it works most of the time some people call that a mug shot um, but you can make a more interesting shot sorry about that oh my god no Consider taking your photo from a different angle, either from below the person's eye level or above, or maybe just a different part of their body. These, these photos can be much more interesting. When you take a picture looking up at someone, they look bigger and powerful, but you also look up their nose, which is kind of gross. Looking down can, be, can make another interesting shot. This is a profile shot looking from the side. Notice that as a photographer, the person got close to the person, took a nice picture, and it is more interesting. Here's another profile. Which do you like better, the fish or Mr. Anthony? So it, I think that's better than just a person holding a fish. It makes it more interesting. So I want you to think about that in your photography. All right, here's a symmetrical photo. The subject is in the center. There's even a horizontal line from the shoreline that divides it in half. Everything's very symmetrical. That can be powerful and it works well in photography. Um, but there's another idea in photography and it's called the rule of thirds. Um, so I'm gonna let the next slide pop up and I'll show you that. Sorry for the dead space here. Here we go. So in the rule of thirds, you divide your, your screen into nine squares and you put your subject in one of the inside corners. So here the cat is at the intersection of the bottom left of the screen. This is called the rule of thirds. You're dividing it into thirds, up and down. And the, what happens is the negative space in the rest of the photo makes the photo more interesting than just putting the image or whatever you want to capture right in the center of the screen. And you'll notice this a lot in TV shows and movies. In fact, when you watch a movie, I want you to notice what the director is doing. Um, are they putting the subject right in the middle of the screen or are they off to the side? Because the background can add a lot of interest to the photo. Um, I don't know about this photo, but there's my cat Tilly, vicious animal that it is. Looks very happy here. So let's look at a few more photos with the rule of thirds. I'm gonna have to wait a second. <laughs> Here you go. So in this image, there's a photo of the tree and it's in the lower right third of the, the 
photograph. And it's also a silhouette. So the sun is behind it. The sun is rising there. And the silhouette behind the tree is an, another effect. And we are going to talk about lighting in the next lesson. So you can see, uh, there, okay, so here's the, the final one here. This is a portraiture. And the uh, subject is to the left and to the bottom. And the background is blurred. You can do that on the newer uh, newer cameras with portraiture mode. You blur the background and it, it makes for a nice photo. So let's talk about burst for a minute. Burst is when you hold down the button and take a whole bunch of pictures. This can work really great in sports and action shots. So what you want to do is get set up with your focus. So you tap on where you think the, the shot's going to be and focus your device. And then you wait for the action and then you hold the button down and take a series of photos. And with a little bit of luck, you're gonna get a great action shot. Um, and this can this is a great uh, technique, but it can load up your phone or your device with photos because it's probably gonna take 20 or 30 photos very quickly. So if you tap on them, you can go and select the photos that you want and delete the others. You are gonna to have to worry about uh, memory issues on your device when you're, you're doing this photography stuff. And we'll talk about how to clean that up. So what I'm going to look for from you on this assignment is um, two shots. One with the subject centered and one with the rule of thirds where you put it in one third of the subject and one third of the screen. And for bonus points, you could send me a nice burst. You know, if you have one of your pet or your brother and sister jumping um, or if you're doing any sports stuff, you can take some photographs that way. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting that email from you. Now next week we have vacation and there will be some more photography lessons posted. Uh, these, these lessons don't require a lot of work, so I would like it if you would try to send me an email and keep up to date. You guys, be good.